So, <clears throat> have you ever um, heard about reverse T3? Uh, if not, gosh, just uh, uh, put it on YouTube. You'll find out, you'll find tons of docs talking about it. Um, and they'll be telling you that all the other docs that don't know anything about it just aren't keeping up with the, uh, with the new things in medicine. Uh, the other docs will say, <clears throat> well, you know what they'll say. So is, is reverse T3 real or not? Um, <clears throat> and maybe I should be asking a, a, a uh, for most of us, asking a more basic question. What is reverse T3? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cover, uh, I found a neat little article in uh, Cleveland uh, Journal of Medicine, Cleveland Clinic Journal of Medicine, talking about um, reverse T3. So this is going to take some time, but again, it gives you, at the end of, the, of uh, going through this, you're going to have a much better idea about what reverse T3 is, but you're also going to have a great idea about what T4 and T3 are and the basics of how to work up thyroid, um, thyroid disease. I thumb down to this area of section of the, uh, of the article because again, this helps uh, you see some very, very basic items. T4 is uh, the basic uh, thyroid hormone that's put out by the thyroid. Um, <clears throat> the, the body tissue actually and, and you'll see on here, T4 has iodines in four places. So that's why it's called T4. Um, it's made by the thyroid in response to TSH from the pituitary. Um, the thyroid's here, the pituitary's up inside your brain, and the pituitary is like the master gland. It controls the adrenals, uh, the thyroid, other glands as well by putting out uh, stimulating hormones. So the pituitary puts out... TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, the thyroid responds to that TSH by making T4. Thyroid makes very little, but T4 is not really the active, um, uh, active uh, thyroid hormone. In reality, it's T, uh, uh, T3. Now, <clears throat> how, is, uh, how do you get T3? Well, the body actually, the tissues other than the thyroid, tend to take off one of these four iodine, um, what we call as moieties, one of these four iodines, and um, form T3. Now, here's the interesting thing, and here's where reverse T3 comes in. Some other uh, tissues, like uh, skin, brain, um, and hemangiomas. Uh, that's an unusual one, but it's significant for some people to have them. Uh, some tissues take off the other iodine. You see, they leave this one and take that one instead. When they do, this reverse T3 is a very inert form of thyroid. So T4 is not active, but it can be made into T3 by body tissues. T3, uh, reverse T3 is not active either, and it cannot be made back into um, active T3. So those are some of the basics, and uh, let's go back and talk a little bit more about uh, the history of, uh, of T4, reverse T3, T3, and a little bit more about uh, what's known about these so far. So <clears throat> uh, reverse T3 was actually discovered about, what, 40 years ago, uh, but in terms of the science, there's still a lot of questions about how significant it is. Despite what you may hear from doctors who are very sure of what's going on with reverse T3 on the internet, um, <clears throat> it is not the, the, the evidence behind it, the scientific evidence is not that clear yet. Um, now, again, it's like many things um, in quote, cutting edge medicine, you see a lot of really good theory, and um, the rationale makes sense, but again, rationale and theory are one thing, scientific evidence is another. Let's, let's go back quickly through the, uh, the timeline, the history for what, uh, th the discovery of thyroid, uh, the thyroid hormone, and, and uh, how that fits into what we're talking about today. 
1907, there were first reports that iodine is actually necessary for thyroid function. Eight years later, a fellow named Kendall isolated thyroxine. In the late 40s, a fellow Hoskins described the negative feedback loop of thyroid hormones on the pituitary gland. So, you know, I mentioned earlier the pituitary is the master hormone or the master of the hormones, the endocrine system. It puts out things like thyroid stimulating hormone. But what, what makes the pituitary decide whether to put out more or less TSH? One of the key things, which was discovered in 1949, is uh, thyroid. If there's a lot of thyroid uh, in the blood, thyroid hormone, then the pituitary slows down its TSH. Uh, production. Uh, in 52, Gross and Pitt, Pitt Rivers discovered uh, and demonstrated T3. Uh, co the following year, they isolated and synthesized T3. And um, <clears throat> then in about two years afterwards, um, parts of that same team, Pitt Rivers, suggested that T4 was actually converted to T3. In, in vivo means in the body. Now, again, it was 30 to 40 years later that they began to describe some other things. But first, in 1970, Shally and Guleman actually won a Nobel Prize regarding work in, uh, excuse me, uh, thyroid. It, they uh, identified thyroid-releasing hormone, which, again, our thyrotropin-releasing hormone. Um, it was 1977, as often uh, it takes a few years for the Nobel Prize uh, Committee to decide what was significant, what wasn't, and, and who to award the, uh, the prize to. Again, it was over the next couple of years. Chopra, a fellow named Chopra, and a couple of other folks got deeper into looking at reverse T3. In um, 75, he began to suggest, look, you may see increases in reverse T3 in systemic illnesses. And that's where this whole <clears throat> theory is beginning to, uh, to happen. And again, we'll start uh, providing more clarification on that in just a minute. It was 76 and 78 when you first started to see reports of euthyroid sick syndrome or low T3 syndrome. Now, what is euthyroid sick syndrome? That is what, again, tipped off people to begin to think about reverse T3. What they found was that the normal thyroid hormones, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, T4, uh, T3, all were normal, yet the patient, when in ICU or when other, um, in other significant illnesses, I'll show you an article later um, about seeing this with acute MI, uh, heart attack. Um, patient has significant illness uh, outside of thyroid, but they have a uh, clinical um, hypothyroidism. They develop a clinical hypothyroidism, decreased um, uh, function of thyroid, even though the T3 appears to be okay in T4 and TSH. And then you start looking, and yes, you do see a significant low reverse T3. Um, <clears throat> so let's go on. Let's talk about... Um, I'm going to skip over some of the details here. This um, image is the one that we've already talked about, which helps you again to understand that T4 is made by the thyroid, released by the thyroid, and then body tissues take one of the iodine off. If they take uh, uh, this one off, then it becomes active T3. If they take that one off, and these tissues that do this in reverse T3, again, are usually in the central nervous system, um, fetus and uh, placenta, uh, skin and uh, brain, um, and hemangiomas. Now, just a quick question. Why would some tissues really want to do this? Well, <clears throat> it's a protective effect. Um, T3 will slow down the development of the placenta. So that's why you tend to see so much reverse T3 uh, in uh, placental, uh, placental and fetal tissues. Same thing, uh, too much T3 can have significant impact on the uh, central nervous system and brain, hence the uh, impact of increased reverse T3 in the brain tissue. Now, <clears throat> how do we know that? Uh, what actually creates these two different T3 versus reverse T3 in the body? 
Um, well, here's where we get into that. There are actually three um, enzymes in the body that, that catalyze or uh, create T3 or verse, reverse T3 from T4. D1 and D2. So D1 and D2 create T3, and D3 creates uh, uh, reverse T3. Now, just to be clear, this is not to be confused with vitamins, vitamin D2, vitamin D3. These are not vitamins. These are enzymes. Um, <clears throat> so D1, again, which makes uh, active T3, is found in, mainly in the liver, kidneys, thyroid, and pituitary, uh, but absent in the C uh, brain. D2 is in the brain, pituitary, and uh, brown ad adipose tissue, skeletal tissue, placenta, and heart. D3, the one that creates the reversed uh, T3, is in the brain, skin, hem uh, hemangiomas, as I mentioned, uh, fetal liver, placenta, and fetal tissues. And as I had said before, D1 and D2 um, catalyze T4 down to... Um, the uh, active T3, whereas D3, found in the brain, the skin, uh, hemangioma tissues, and fetal tissues, all create reverse T3, which is the inactive form. Now, that gives you a lot of the basic science behind this issue. And again, once you get that piece, you're probably ahead of 90, 95% of docs that's um, very few of us cover that during medical school or even residency training. <clears throat> now, um, after we've talked about what's called the deiodinases, deiodinases, um, what's deiodinases? D, break it down as usual. D means to take away iodine, aces, and aces means uh, enzymes. So D1, D2, and D3 are deiodinases. They're uh, I, uh, enzymes that take away iodine. Now, let's get back to the to this link between increased reverse T3 and systemic illness. Um, D3 is the main physiologic inactivator of thyroid hormones, plays a central uh, role in protecting tissues from excess thyroid hormone. Again, excess thyroid hormone is uh, damaging. And in fact, there's a syndrome called hyper or increased thyroidism. Uh, you can get uh, hair loss. Um, you eat, but you continue to lose weight. You're jittery. Um, <clears throat> again, it's like pressing on the gas too fast metabolically, whereas hypothyroidism is uh, not enough uh, gas or fuel. In the adult tissues, the importance of D3 uh, regulation becomes apparent under certain uh, pathophysiologic, that just means patho means sick, and physiologic means mechanism of. So during uh, some sick mechanisms, uh, you get significant um, role for D3. Now, where is all this going? Malnutrition. If you listen to these docs that talk about D, reverse D3, They'll tell you two of the major areas for um, increased reverse uh, T3 and this functional hypothyroidism are with um, insulin resistance and malnutrition. I think a lot of the theory is, um, <clears throat> look, since we have seen clear evidence that malnutrition uh, turns the... Um, the the D3 <laughs> turns D3 on, um, then too much, um, too much dieting, too much um, um, caloric restriction can, is the same as malnutrition and therefore triggers the body into reverse T3 activity. Now, again, I think that's the next area where debate is going to happen. There's clear evidence that uh, D3 um, creates reverse T3. And, again, not vitamin D3, if you've tuned in late. Not vitamin D3. It's an enzyme, a D-iodinase uh, enzyme. 
causes reverse, creates uh, reverse T3 by taking a specific iodine off of the T4 um, hormone. That is stimulated by malnutrition or decreased calorie intake. Now, if you look at people like uh, Jason Fung, who's a major um, uh, proponent of, of fasting, he'll say you don't want to decrease your basal metabolic rate. Most people assume you don't want to decrease your basal metabolic rate. Almost every doc that I've heard on YouTube or the internet uh, talking about this condition, say that you don't want to decrease your basal metabolic rate. Again, I don't think that the concept that maybe decreased uh, basal metabolism is not such a bad thing. I don't think people have hit that yet. But yet, if you read The Longevity Diet by uh, Walter Longo and you begin to get deeper into longevity research, you begin to question question this assumption that a lower basal met metabolic rate is a bad thing. So anyhow, <clears throat> we've gone deep into uh, a couple of areas. Let's get back out and, and look from uh, 30,000 feet. So again, there are a lot of docs on the internet who are saying uh, reverse T3 is bad. They're saying, look, it's already been associated with um, uh, significant illnesses, uh, ICU, uh, intensive care unit type of illnesses and we know what causes it, we know what makes it, uh, we want to reverse that. We also know that it's associated with uh, decreased caloric intake and again we start going down that path of making assumptions. Has the research been done in that area? I'll show you again in, in later and in other videos what research uh, has and has not been done. But uh, this is a great article if you want to get a little bit better understanding of uh, reverse, D, uh, reverse T3. Now, they end up kind of weak uh, in this article. I'll read to you the take-home message. The existence of an inactive path, inactivating pathway for thyroid hormones represents a homeostatic mechanism. And in selected circumstances, measuring reverse serum T3, or serum reverse T3, may be useful, such as in euthyroid sick patients, the ICU syndrome that I was talking about. The discovery of molecular mechanisms that lead to the re reactivation of D3 in illness is an important field of research. Now, <clears throat> so they end up not really um, saying whether or not um, T3 is real, whether or, not, wh whether or not it represents a significant, a reverse T3, um, represents a significant problem. I think there's, um, although that may sound like a weak ending, I think unfortunately it's the truth. I don't think the research is out there yet. I do think there's a lot of interesting logic as I've just covered in this video. But uh, again, the scientific evidence is not so clear. Thank you for your uh, interest.